Hello, uh, my name is Seigaku, and um, tonight I'm actually going to talk about uh, Obon, the Obon festival that uh, this time of year, um, many Soto priests are very busy um, with uh, the Obon uh, preparations. And uh, one of the things that we do often is um, we, we might get requests from uh, Sangha members to go chant um, sutras at their Butsudan or Buddhist altar um, and dedicate the merit to their deceased loved ones. Um, we also get uh, requests for people to come to the temple to do that as well. And um, so I thought first, I'll talk a little bit about what Obon is. And um, so Obon is the uh, pronunciation for the Ulambana Sutra, which um, dates back to the time of Shakyamuni Buddha, the historical Buddha. And it's said that, um, I believe it was in a summer ango or practice period, um, there was a priest or a monk named uh, Mokuren or Madgolyayana in Sanskrit. And uh, he was known for having sort of insightful supernatural powers uh, related with his practice. And he, his mother had passed away and he had a vision of his mother suffering in the gaki or hungry ghost realm. And uh, this distressed him a lot. His mother was somebody that cared for him and nurtured him and supported him. And uh, he was very troubled by why she would be there suffering in that way and uh, unable to uh, eat. When she would try and eat, the food would turn to fire. When she would try to drink water, the food would turn, or the water would turn to pus. Uh, it's a very uh, painful existence. And uh, so Madhgalayayana went to Shakyamuni Buddha and asked him, what can I do? And Shakyamuni Buddha said, um, you should gather up meals and drinks and offer them to the monks during this summer ongo and transfer the merit of that offering to your mother. And so Madhgalayayana gathered up some food, gathered up some drinks, sat down, offered it up all to the monks and everybody partook and enjoyed it. And then any merit that might be generated from that offering to the three treasures of Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, he transferred to his mother. So later in his sitting, he decided to go and try and see if he could find his mother. And so he went back to the hungry ghost realm and she wasn't there. I'm, I imagine that he asked another gawky <laughs> uh, or hungry ghost, hey, have you seen my mom? And they said, nah, nah, she moved on. <laughs> so that's where uh, this tradition comes from. And it's said that uh, Mudgolyayana was so happy that his mother had moved on from being a hungry ghost that he started dancing. And so this is where what's called the Bon Odori or the Obon dancing comes from. So after the service, everybody gets together and they do dancing and there's snacks and treats and drinks and all kinds of stuff. And what we do is we're welcoming our deceased loved ones to come with us, to come and join us for food and drink and dancing. And then we send them off back to wherever it was that they were on their way to Buddhahood. So it's kind of a pit stop, you know, for whoever wants to come in and enjoy it. And another aspect of Obon is what's called uh, sejiki or feeding the hungry ghosts. So for all of those beings that don't have anyone to remember them and to make offerings to them, uh, it's a very sad thing. And so we offer up all of that merit, all the food, all the drink to all of those forgotten spirits that have no one to make offerings to. And so we say, you guys should come and have some too and join us for dancing. And then uh, at the end of Obon, what we do is we gather up uh, the names on lanterns and uh, it's not uncommon to go down to a local river or ocean. And what we do is we send them back out uh, to the spirit world, wherever they may have been, whatever existence they may have been in. And um, it's one of my favorite times of year. Um, it, I will say, is uh, the busiest 
time of year. <laughs> um, and it's, it's exciting too, because we get to see people who sometimes don't get to come to the temple that often. Um, and it's just shared by everyone. Um, I think that uh, often I get questions from people, uh, two, two main questions when I talk about Obon. Uh, one of the questions is, if there is no soul or eternal self, who's coming back? Um, and I mean, that's a difficult question. Um, one of the ways that I like to answer it is, um, Obon is just as much for the living as it is for those who've departed. So in that story that I told you about Maud Galyayana, um, this whole thing came about from the suffering that he felt having seen his mother somewhere that was terrible. Um, it can be very, very difficult to think about our death and the death of our loved ones, our friends and family. Um, and this also serves as a way for us to celebrate them and to remember them. Um, I know for some individuals, myself included, it's also a time for um, working through some of the difficult emotions you may have had with a loved one who passed. Uh, maybe some, someone passed that you didn't get some um, reconciliation with or that you had a difficult relationship with. And it's been very beneficial for me to make sure that I make offerings to those spirits of my family members that I know I had difficulty with. So it's a healing thing for the living. Um, the technical answer <laughs> um, to who's coming back if there's no such thing as a soul or a self is um, we don't deny the existence of a self. We deny the existence of an everlasting eternal self. And there are many selves. Um, I am a priest. I am a husband. I am soon to be a father. I am a brother, a son. Um, I'm uh, a friend. I'm probably a difficult person for others. <laughs> Who knows? You know, we, we, we uh, embody all of these different selves. None of them are everlasting. So when a person passes away, when I pass away, you know, there's somebody's going to have lost a, a father, uh, a temple priest. <laughs> They're going to have lost uh, a deshi or a disciple, um, a brother, a son. Again, all, all those selves that I am currently, all those selves are going to come to an end. And so... I usually don't like to go with this answer because it, it becomes technical, but there's, there's this um, storehouse of seeds of our actions, our karma. And these seeds are planted there. And the fruit or experience of those actions, the results are felt within all of the six realms of being. So heaven, hell, hungry ghosts, animals, shuras, human beings, they're, they're felt in all of those. So it, that's a long-winded way of saying any existence you could possibly think of. We all feel the repercussions and the uh, happiness and sorrows of all of our actions at some point or another. So the road to Buddhahood is very long. And... What's coming back is wherever the self was on its way to Buddhahood. We're saying, come on in, uh, the doors are open. We open up all the doors, all the windows. We even uh, perform the service most of the time, turned around <laughs> from the altar facing outward and we're inviting everyone and anyone. And um, Oftentimes, also on the altar, it's, I, it's one of my favorite things to make is we take an eggplant and you poke uh, little sticks for legs and the eggplant represents a cow. Cows are slow. And you take a cucumber and you poke sticks and that represents the horse. So we want our, our, the spirits, our relatives to arrive quickly on the cucumber horse and we want them to take off slowly on the eggplant cow. So... Um, it's, uh, it's a time 
for me, especially lately, uh, expecting uh, a daughter, that I think, how am I going to share these things with her? How am I going to think of them, not just as a priest, but also um, sharing it with my family and uh, getting to introduce her to, you know, people in my family who've passed away. I sometimes, uh, for me in the morning, I'll come in first thing in the morning, offer a stick of incense, a little bit of coffee for myself, a little bit of coffee on the altar for my family. And uh, that's the way I, I celebrate my morning. You know, I get to sit with people that I've lost and uh, share news, um, you know, and if, if, if anything else, it's something that makes me feel good. It's something that makes me feel like I'm still connecting with people that I've lost. Um, and uh, if there's 10 to 30 minutes for Zazen, that's great too. <laughs> but um, I have a feeling that uh, as I approach parenthood, the time might become shorter and shorter for that. And so it might be uh, kin hin and diaper change. I don't know. But um, yeah, so, so that's, that's the main uh, thing I wanted to share tonight was a discussion of Obon because it was on my mind. I'd been thinking, what am I going to talk about tonight? What am I going to talk about tonight? I thought I could talk about the six paramitas. I could maybe, I don't know, I could find something that Dogen wrote. And then I thought, well, I'm so busy with Obon. Why don't I just share Obon? <laughs> um, 